Welcome to App Design Tips. I have with me here Zach Nielsen. He's an award-winning creative designer, and I'm gonna start over. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to App Design Tips. I have with me Zach Nielsen, an award-winning freelance designer. I think I nailed that introduction that Yeah, time. <laughs> yeah, perfect introduction. And so, if you wanna go ahead and, yeah. and introduce yourself. Yeah. So I've been a freelance designer, mostly web designer, for about 11 years now. Okay. Uh, 11 years of last month, actually. Wow. So going on to 12 soon. <laughs> cool. Uh, I've kind of focused on web design most of my career, but I've done a little bit of everything in the digital design world. Um, you know, back in the days of Photoshop, uh -huh. uh, yep. started back then, and uh, kind of just never stopped, you know? Started pretty young and just kept going. And, here I am today, getting interviewed on your channel. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so, what gave you the passion to start designing? Like, where did yeah. you where did you start off and, and know that you wanted to go in this direction? So, uh, I was pretty young when I realized it. Probably in elementary was the earliest time that I wow. knew I wanted to do like making websites. Back then, oh, really? I didn't realize elementary? I wanted to be a designer. I thought I wanted to be a developer. I uh -huh. didn't know the difference. <laughs> See, yeah. so my grandfather actually taught me web development on WordPress okay. back in the early days. Um, and it kind of, I never really knew there was another world to it of the mm -hmm. actual design side where you could just focus on making the design. So I started by making websites all the time. I was making gaming websites for my friends at school uh -huh. and we would kind of just play them all the time, you know, just <laughs> find those free games that you could just add the code to your website all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, that's kind of where I started. And then from there, about junior high, late junior high, I realized the design side of things. And that's when I really kind of dove into learning the actual design side and not just building the websites um, and kind of never stopped from there. Nice. So, yeah. so, so I have a similar story actually where because I really enjoyed apps, applications and how you use yeah, them and so, sure. so I thought, you know, I want to be a developer because that's how right. I how I create <laughs> I totally these got apps. The same thing, yeah. And so really for me, like before that era and also in elementary, I was really creative, whether it's uh, singing, doing photography, drawing, it's just like all of these disciplines, I really enjoyed like each aspect of it. Yeah. And so as I was growing up, there were different opportunities to do video and to do photography, um, to make some music and different things. And I always thought like, as soon as I learned that one discipline, like that's what I want to do. Right. And this is what I right. want to do. Sure, yeah. and so, like after learning all of this, it's like, where can I encompass all of this experience and knowledge and the creative talent into one kind of discipline, which is right. like UX design, right. it's everything. It's true. Uh, in there, true. and so, and it really was, I remember thinking, I need to be a developer so I can create these apps. Yeah. And when I started getting into it, I was like, no, I'm gonna find developers. Exactly. Like, I'm gonna start like, wait designing. a minute, do I have to do all of this? Yeah, I can get my vision out there exactly. with a team helping me out. And so Absolutely. that's kind of where my story was Love too. It. Yeah, mine was pretty similar. I mean, I kind of skipped over the part where I got really into Xcode and stuff and making uh -huh. iOS apps. Oh, but nice. Yeah, in high school, I really got into that and kind of pretty similar to you, but just kind of grew into design and really fell in love with it and to actually do we have a lot of like experimental web design too? Mm -hmm. uh, not so much like app design or product design, but more like, I don't know what you imagine when I say experimental web design. Uh -huh. I'm trying to imagine it, but. <laughs> I mean, just kind of think of like a, a designer's portfolio website. Okay. It's usually pretty out there, really mm -hmm. creative, uh, really testing some things you wouldn't really use in a business setting. Um, those are the things I really enjoy doing and still enjoy mm -hmm. doing today more than anything. So pushing the boundaries of your design exactly. in the way, okay. Exactly. Cool. Break the rules, you know, uh -huh. don't, don't be another <laughs> apple.com. <laughs> that brings me to my next question, yeah. which is, what is a UX designer what to you? So UX explain designer. UX design. Yeah. Great question. Great question. Um, I'd say UX design is kind of like an art form, really, of understanding uh, how a person, I'm trying not to use the word user, by the way. Uh -huh. This is a trending thing, if you haven't noticed on social uh -huh. media. People are just trying to stop using the word user. Okay. Uh, so people that use, like, your people app, your website. Design. Right, yeah. <laughs> Customer It's going to happen, I'm telling you. People yeah. are insane with these titles. Just experience so design, XD, not yeah. UXD. <laughs> Seriously. Uh, but I would say it's, you know, really understanding how someone uses something mm -hmm. uh, and designing the experience around how they use it is probably mm -hmm. the easiest way to describe it for me. Okay, and that's similar to me too, and, and a lot of people confuse, this is gonna be my next question, is the difference between UX and UI design, 
and they think because I can design pixels, I design a user experience. And I think and that I it's, think it's definitely different. Yeah. Yeah, and things like they bleed into each other somewhat, but you really have to understand that person. Mm -hmm. There's there's a lot more research in the UX side than there is in the UI side, right? Yeah, and I, and I feel like people can also they have their own troubles in life or troubles at work or different things that if they wanted to find out would I be a good experienced designer, they can start to think about different experiences throughout their life or career or different things that they yeah. might find unfitting and change that for themselves. Yeah. And that's where I think if you start off doing that for yourself and making that better, you can start to understand other users' needs as well. You can start Absolutely, to do that yeah. research and say, now I, I know how to solve problems. I know how to create a good, perceivable, tangible plan. Um, whether it's pixels or not, mm. you do that. And then you say, now let's understand other users and their pain points where I may not have those same pain points, but right. if I can learn that, I can apply that same practice. Exactly. I totally agree. And so that kind of bled into my next question as far as UI and UX design. And for those of you guys that don't know, uh, UX design is user experience design. UI design is user interface design and mostly has to do with pixels, designing pixels for you know right. uh, websites and apps and things like that. So yeah. so to you, what is the difference between the two? I kind of touched on a little bit, but like mm -hmm. UX design is more like you have to understand the person that's using it, not mm -hmm. the user, the person that's using it. Mm -hmm. UI is more making it actually look good and making it make sense mm -hmm. uh, in the digital form. Um, and I think they, they're both very vital and they both go together very well. And they're absolutely necessary if you're doing product design, mm -hmm. uh, but not so much if you're doing like experimental web design, like, mm -hmm. like I was talking about. But I think that's the main differences. Cool. Yeah, and, and what I think too is there's a lot of people that are really good at both and they can do both very well, but I've yeah. also seen people that are really good at the experience design that can lay out the wireframe of something and really plan things out. Mm -hmm. And they really do pass it off into an interface designer or a graphic yeah. designer to polish it up because they're too busy with the research and... And especially when it's like a big app or something, mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of factors going into a lot of people that are impacting it and you definitely are gonna want separate people when you're in that type of situation. And I think there's separate phases too. Like there's times where we're trying to solve problems and figure out like, is this what we're gonna keep? Is it not? If you start to design high fidelity, mm. you start getting mixed up in the meetings of, should that be this shade of blue? Yeah. Like, should it be this? And you're like, wait a minute, do we even want this? That's exactly. the question. Yeah. And so really designing in that wireframe mode and really having them focused and narrowed in on solving the problem first you can start to solidify those ideas and then say, after this phase, now let's go and polish this up. Yeah, I think that's absolutely perfect. What is your primary process? So let's say somebody comes to you, a freelance yeah. uh, a client comes to you and says, we have this project we want you to take on. What is sort of, can you walk us through the process right. of what you do? Uh, the first thing I do is look into who this person is, who they're with. A mm -hmm. um, lot of the time, that's the part that where I say no. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you're like, well, this is just another product designer or whatever. Well, you've mm -hmm. done it so many times. It's just so boring. <laughs> it's like, well, I'm not really interested in this type of project anymore. So uh -huh. first thing I check is, am I interested in this type of project? Mm -hmm. um, try to look into what's their budget for this project because sometimes you really never know who's coming to you and oh, yeah. what scale they mm -hmm. can be on for you. Um, so I think I actually use Dribble a lot to get a lot of my work and it really helps with that because you can put in the budget you're willing to work with before mm -hmm. they even message you. So that's okay. a, definitely a good tip that I've used a lot is send people to Dribble. You set uh, the types of projects mm -hmm. and the budget of the projects you're willing to accept. Um, so those are the two main things I go after. So you have to qualify them to right. make sure that you're not right. like stuck Don't in just thing jump just into it like, your... okay, yeah, well, here's a, here's yeah, a wireframe or whatever. Um, and I actually don't do wireframes a lot because like I said, I'm doing experimental web design so much mm -hmm. that I'm not really focused on like the most user-friendly website. I'm yeah. focused mm -hmm. on the most beautiful website a lot of the time. Um, and the only reason I do that is because it's what I enjoy. Mm -hmm. And if you can find a market of people for what you enjoy, why not just oh, yeah, go after absolutely. that? Absolutely. <laughs> right? Like, there's so many product design opportunities I can go after. Uh, it'd be so easy to do just because mm -hmm. you've done it so many times, so much experience in it. But um, I think it's super easy or super important to find your niche mm -hmm. and really find that area that you're in um, and go after those clients. So like I do that with my dribble and I set up my dribble um, 
with my portfolio. It's not in a all showcase, my work. It's like this is what it's I want. It's the type do. of work it's I want to yeah, do. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's super important for my process of getting clients in the first place. Yeah. Uh, but from there, when I actually start designing, I'll usually jump into Adobe XD mm -hmm. um, and start working on some quick little examples or some thoughts that I had based on their brand or that person or whatever it might be. Um, and kind of just go from there and work with them on what, figure out what exactly they're looking for, how much creative control they want. That's super important to me. Mm -hmm. Again, with experimental web design, you want to have as much control as possible because yeah. that's why you love it. Um, so those are my main things I go after in the beginning. Um, but from there, it's all done in XD. Um, I don't really use any other design tools except maybe like Illustrator. I do first like some custom text stuff mm -hmm. that I've been doing a lot lately. Okay. Uh, but yeah, that's the basic of it. Yeah, and, and there's a similar process that I go through. So especially onboarding a new client and is they're talking to me about their potential design and what they want me to work with them with. One of the things that I found that works really well is as they're reaching out to you, they're saying we have some of these basic needs and especially if it's an existing product, right? right yeah. Or an existing website. And they start to talk about like, here are some of the things that we want to try to solve. And so I know that they have access to their analytics and some of their other tools that are telling them exactly where the bottlenecks are that mm -hmm. I don't have access to yet, where I could, I could actually do right. better if I did have access. But just, just for, to, to increase my value for that client, then I'll start to listen to what their pain is and I'll start to explore their product and, and feel that. And there's times where I even submit their product to a user to some totally. interviews yeah. and I'll start to tell them, like, I imagine here are some of the things that you're having some pain with and mm -hmm. here's some of the things that you might want to solve in your business that, that your users might love. Yeah. And just doing that, even though it wasn't the exact thing that they came to me with, it's like this, he has some understanding right. on how to solve that some totally problems. Makes sense. Yeah. And it's kind of like a click, you know, let's get, let's get you in this Google Analytics, yeah. let's get you in this and, and let's get going. And so I found that really valuable for my process. Yeah, if you're going after like, like the customers you have are like business owners most mm -hmm. of them, right? Yeah. Um, I think that process is perfect for that type of client. Mm -hmm. And that's the types of things I would do when I was mostly doing business stuff because I actually ran an agency a few years ago mm -hmm. um, and all we did was like small to medium businesses. And we had a very similar process where we tried to go after the data first and then mm -hmm. show how we can improve on that, not just what they're asking for. Like maybe they just want a new homepage, but you're like, well, here's some vital issues that could totally improve your whole business. You uh -huh. know? Uh, very similar to what you were just saying. Well, I appreciate you coming on to this yeah, YouTube channel and it's, it's always the been great. Always watching it all the time. Awesome. Trying yeah, to stay it's... up on the videos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's fun doing it. I mean, just got into it. It started just growing pretty good and, yeah. and it's exciting being able to um, you know, just give advice to people, especially the young people yeah, that are absolutely. learning UX design, UI design. I know a lot of my videos, they seem like really basic and a lot right. of people are like, well, obviously. But then you, know? you also get a bunch of views and comments on those ones too, right? Yeah. And, and I, I feel like UX design is actually really approachable and people don't understand that. UI design, it's, if, if you have any creative ability, you can start to get in there and, and start to create what your imagination of an app is or a website, yeah, you know, things like that. And so my job and what I'd like to do is just get the, the technical process out of the way, just to say, you know, here are the tools that you can use. Here are some of the things that you can do to improve your skills. And even though I feel like it's very basic, it's going to help bring a lot more designers into Absolutely this. Absolutely agree. And I do a bunch of design reviews with Adobe. Um, on their Adobe XD Slack, which we could totally throw in the, oh, yeah, in the in description, description if you guys check sure. it out. We do monthly design reviews, like design challenges in XD. Uh -huh. uh, perfect for beginners and uh, experienced designers alike. So definitely check that out. Uh, but anyways. Cool, uh, yeah. And I do XD, a lot of XD is free too. So if you guys yeah. want to, oh, yeah. I mean, it's totally free. I totally free. forget about that. Yeah, and <laughs> that's one of the things too, is they say that we want it to be so approachable to people that we want to give it you away for free so people this can. and get right at it. Yeah, and it's and really easy to learn. It totally shows in the design reviews I do. There's a ton of beginners, a ton of people that are not professional designers whatsoever. And it's interesting to see like and what they come, they come up in, with. And there's so many of them that are so interested in just starting UX and UI design. Even when we judged at the Creative Jam, the people oh, exactly. that, were, that, were, that were competing there, they said this is the first time we've ever opened up XD. I think they're very similar type of people. XD. Very first time. And you're like, wow, there's the animation of it. And they're <laughs> yeah, like, seriously. Just pull like it it's up. so it's easy like, to just get involved in it. Yeah, and they're just, just like, I had no idea it. that you can do all this without code. You exactly. Know? And the crazy thing is the whole way I got into a relationship with Adobe 
was because of the beta XD. Oh, right. I actually tweeted a picture of something I made in like the very early beta and they uh, reached out to me to make a UI kit for when they launched the official version. Oh, and it nice. kind of just kept going from there. So yeah, I'd say XD has opened up a ton of things for me from the very beginning. Very nice. Um, but yeah, I totally agree with you on the aspect of building community and helping beginners. I mean, it's something I do every day with the Adobe reviews and mm -hmm. you're doing every day with your channel. So yeah, definitely yeah. love to awesome. bring them both together. Cool. Well, it was nice having you and thanks for coming on the channel. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for watching, guys. If you want to see more videos, tips, and tutorials like this, be sure to subscribe and hit that bell icon for more videos.